routing is how we load components when a user navigates to a page in our application. Let's say we have an app, hosted at example.com, that links to various pages, like contact or about. When the user clicks a link, it loads the appropriate component. But, when the component loads, the URL stays the same. We want the URL to reflect which component is loaded, like example.com slash contact. With routing, we associate the URL with a component so that the app simulates navigation to a different page. We can set up the routing package in multiple ways. We can install it into an existing project with NPM. Or, we can add it when we scaffold a new project with the CLI. We'll install it manually with NPM, to start, then cover how to include it with a new project, at the end of the lesson. To install the package manually, open a new terminal by going up to Terminal in the top menu bar. From there, type npm install view-router at next space dash dash save. The save flag tells npm that we want the plugin to be installed as a runtime dependency instead of a dev dependency. Once the package has been installed, we'll be able to see it in the package.json file. Although it's not strictly necessary, we want to stay organized and create a few folders in the source directory of our project. We'll start with the standard components folder. This is where we'll store all the components that make up a single page. Next is the views folder. This is where we store our pages, like contact or about. These pages are just regular components that's put together with the components from the components folder. Finally, we'll create the router folder. This is where we'll create the router and set all the routes for the application. As a side note, the folder names can be anything you want, but we use the view convention here. The same folders are generated when we scaffold a new project with the view CLI that includes the router. The next step is to create the router. We'll start by creating a new file called index.js in the router folder. Inside it, we'll import the create router method from the view router package. This method creates the router and takes an object with roots and settings as its parameter. We can think of it as the create app method, but for the routing system. Next, we'll import another method called create web history. This allows Vue to tap into the browser's forward and back button functionality and also disables the hash symbol in the URL. We have to add it to the object as a value to the history option. The second option we need is called roots, that takes an array of roots as objects. We don't have any roots yet, so our array can be empty for the moment. And at the bottom of the file, we'll export default, the router we just created. The final step to get the router working is to import it into the main.js file and register it to the app with the use method. As a side note, the router must be registered before the app is mounted, otherwise it won't work. A root is an object with at least two options. The first option is the path, which is the relative path the component can be accessed with. For example, if we specify the path as slash contact, it will translate into example.com slash contact in the URL. The second option is component. This is the page component we want to load when the roots URL is accessed. And to have access to the page components, we need to import them at the top of the file. Standard practice is to combine smaller components into views that act as pages in our app. As an example, we've created two new components called Homepage and Users Page in the Views folder. Each of them has a template block with an identifying heading. We'll start by importing our Home and Users pages at the top of the file. Then, we'll create our first root in the array. We want the Homepage component to load when the user visits the application's main page. 
In that case, we just specify the path as a slash. Next, we'll add the user's page component on the slash user path. This is to demonstrate that the path name can be different from the component name and because we're going to add parameters to it later on. Now that we have some routes set up, we need to tell Vue where to render them. Our first instinct might be to load the components in the root app, then use VF directives to render them. But, Vue makes it much easier. Vue has a special component, called the router view, that will handle the entire process for us. All we need to do, is include it once in the template block where we want the views to be rendered. As an example, let's add the router view to our root app component. Notice that we don't import the individual views in the config object. In fact, we don't have one at all. We don't need to import them here, because they're already imported in the router's index.js file. The router will handle loading and unloading the views behind the scenes, we don't have to do it manually, like we do, with regular components. If we run the example in the browser, we'll see a heading with the text home page, which means our home view was loaded successfully. And, if we go to slash user in the browser, it will show the user's component. If we want to link to a root, we don't use a regular anchor tag. View gives us another custom component called router link. The router link component is an open and close element and uses the to prop to specify the route we want to link to. To demonstrate, let's create router links to the home and users pages. If we take a look in the browser, we'll see the two links in the top left. And if we click on a link, it'll change the route in the URL and render the corresponding component. When we compile the application, Vue will convert the router link to a standard anchor tag. If the root in the URL matches a link, Vue adds two classes to that link. The first is router link active. The link will have this class as long as the current path starts with the root. Any nested paths will also be affected. For example, if the path is slash user, both slash user and slash user slash john will be affected. The second class is router link exact active. The link will have the class applied only when the root matches the path exactly. For example, if the path is slash user, it won't affect slash user slash john. To demonstrate, let's add a class that shows the active link color as red. If we cycle through the roots in the browser, the link will turn red each time the root matches it. At the moment, our links are hard-coded. If we want to change a root sometime in the future, we'll have to find all its links in the app and update them manually. For example, we might decide we want the slash contact root to be slash contact us. View allows us to specify a name option when we define a root. We can then reference that name in an object in the router link, and Vue will automatically connect it to the corresponding path. To demonstrate, let's define a name for each of our routes. Then, we'll go over to the root app component and use their names in the router links. When we run the example in the browser and cycle through the links, everything still works as it should. Now, if we do get into the situation where we have to change a route, we only have to change its name in the router. View allows us to redirect one route to another with the redirect option. We specify this option in the route we want to redirect from. For example, let's say that the original route to the user's page was member but we decided to change member to user. If we run the example in the browser and go to the member URL, it will redirect us to user. A root must exist if we want to redirect to it. Let's say we have it the other way around. Our old root is user, and we want to redirect to member. If we go to the browser to the user page, 
it's supposed to redirect us to member, but it doesn't. That's because the member path isn't associated with a component. It doesn't exist, so it can't redirect to it. Similar to regular websites, it's possible for a user to end up on a page that doesn't exist. We want to handle the error elegantly and give the user a way to find what they're looking for. View makes that easy for us to do with a regular expression that catches all the URLs that isn't defined in the root system. If any of the links match, we can tell View to load a custom 404 page that tells the user what's going on and gives them options on how to proceed. The name and component options can be anything we want, but the path must be the specific catch-all root. It should also be noted that the catch-all root must be the last root in the array, otherwise it'll catch any roots defined below it. To demonstrate, we've created a 404 page in the views folder called not found. Let's go over to the router and add the catch-all root at the bottom and link it to the not found page. If we go to the browser and change the URL to any root that doesn't exist in our app, we'll see the 404 page. When we created the router, we added an option called history with the create web history method as its value. This method does a few things, including allowing us to use the browser's forward and back functionality. We can use that functionality to navigate around our application programmatically with the router instance object and two of its methods. The go method allows us to specify a positive or negative number to move forward or backward in the history. The push method allows us to go to a specific path. As its argument, it accepts either a hard-coded path or an object with a path name. To demonstrate, we've added two buttons to our root app component, each with a click event. In the first button, we'll add the router instance object and reference the go method. We'll just do negative one to go back one step. And for the second button, we'll do the same thing, but this time, we'll use positive one as the number. The go method requires that there's at least one step in the history, so let's create some history with the router links. Then, we'll go back one step and forward one step to demonstrate that it works. The history API is especially useful when dealing with multi-step forms. If a user missed something in one of the steps, they can be sent back easily. Now, let's go back to the editor and add another button. This time, we'll use the push method and send the user to a specific path. If we run the example in the browser and click the redirect button, we see the URL change. Of course, this page doesn't exist in our root system, so it shows the 404 page instead. In a real-world application, we would try to make our JavaScript bundle size as small as possible, so the user doesn't have to wait too long. We can do something called code splitting, which means we only load a view's JavaScript when a user visits that root. Instead of importing a component and declaring it in the component option, we create an arrow function that directly imports the component. Let's demonstrate by lazy loading our users page. We'll also remove the import at the top. If we go to the browser and click on the user's link, the app will still load the page as expected, so we don't really see a difference right now. The difference will be in the size of the JavaScript bundle once the application is compiled in the build step. The view CLI allows us to add the routing package when we scaffold a new project. In the first step, where we need to pick a preset, we want to manually select features. In the features step, we can select the router. Of course, we want to use view 3. We'll use history mode because the lesson covers it, but you can say no if you don't need it. The rest of the options are related to this demonstration, so you can pick the ones you want. When the CLI scaffolds the new project, it'll set up some routes and register the router in the application's config. 
In the next video, we'll learn about root and query parameters, as well as nested roots and page scroll behavior. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.